Hey folks, we're looking at day three of unit one today. So let's get right into these notes. In the last notes, we, uh, we worked with rates of change, which is slope, and we worked with uh, intercepts, or y-intercepts. So we worked with M and B, and uh, we're just gonna keep building on that. So here we go. Uh, right off the bat, finding intercepts and rate of change from graphs and tables. You have a graph here, for example, number one, Isabel is filling a tank. The graph shows the amount of water in liters versus time. So as time increases, the water is increasing as well. Okay, so now it says, what is the amount of water in the tank at zero minutes? Okay, so obviously the minutes, we're looking at the, uh, uh, the horizontal label. Okay, the horizontal label, Zero is right here. So how much water is in the tank? Okay, the water in the tank, we're talking about the, the vertical axis, okay, with that label. So you're looking right there uh, for this point, and that point is the point zero comma 80. So zero minutes give you 80 liters. B, choose the statement that best describes how the time and water are related, then find the rate. Okay, so let's do that. As time increases, the water decreases. Well, I've kind of already mentioned that as time goes to the right, the amount of water is going up, okay? It's a positive slope because it's rising to the right. So I would say that as the time is increasing, the amount of water in the tank is also increasing. So positive rise, positive run. Okay. So it's this one. And at what rate is it increasing? So again, the rate is rise over run. It's your slope. Okay, so rise over run. Let's take a couple of points here. Let's take the first point, which was 0, 080. And let's take, uh, let's take one that goes right through the grid line. That one's kind of nice. And that's the point 1, comma, is that 320? So 1, comma, 320. Okay. Let's go back in time and use the, uh, the slope formula that you did a lot in geometry last year. Okay, so we got x1 and y1 and x2 and y2. Remember slope, the formula for slope is y2 minus y1 in the numerator, a change in y, that's the rise, over x2 minus x1 in the denominator, that's the change in the x, that's your run, okay? So if we look at that using these values to input, well, y2 is 320, so I'm gonna go m equals 320 minus y1, well, y1 is 80, so I'm going to go minus 80 over x2 minus x1. x2 is 1, x1 is 0. So 1 minus 0. So you got 320 minus 80. 320 minus 80 is 240 over 1. Okay? So my slope, my rate of increase is going to be 240 over one. I don't need to put over one, okay? But what is the rate? We have to have a label, okay? It was rise, which is liters, over run, which was minutes. So 240 liters per minute is my final answer. Okay, hopefully we got that. Let's look at the next question. Now in example two, 
they give us a table of values, which it, you know is kind of nice. They uh, they give us our points. We don't have to even figure out the coordinate pairs uh, to put into slope formulas, for example. So let's take a look here. Uh, slope. Well, we we just got through uh, using the slope formula, and all you need to remember is that. You can use any two points on a line to find the slope of that line. We can pick any one of these pairs of points. So we can take uh, 0, 8, and we can take 1, 11. Okay? We could have taken negative 1, 5, and 3, 17. It wouldn't matter. Right? I just really like it when we have a 0 and a 1 that we're going to be adding or subtracting. That kind of is nice to me. So if we use uh, these two points for y2 minus y1, if I choose um, the 1 comma 11 to be the second point, then I get 11 minus 8, because that's y2 minus y1, over x2 minus x1 would be 1 minus 0. Okay? And now let's just simplify. 11 minus 8 is 3. 1 minus 0 is 1, so my slope is 1. Easy peasy. Okay. My y-intercept. My y-intercept requires no work, just a little bit of brains. Your brains tell you that when you are looking at your graph and you look at your y-axis, okay, any time your graph intercepts the y-axis, you just need to remember that the x coordinate is zero. Okay? Every point on that y axis has an x coordinate that is zero. So all you need to do is to look at your table of values and find where the x coordinate is zero. And obviously, it's right there. So the point zero, comma eight is on the y axis. How do I know? Because x is zero. So that means your y-intercept is eight. Right? Well, I've got m and I've got b, so the equation should follow pretty nicely that it's y equals m, which in this case is one, x plus b, which is eight. I know what some of you are thinking. We don't need the one, and you're absolutely correct. If it's one X, you can absolutely write your answer like this. Perfectly good answer. It's a little more elegant than the, having the extra one, but I would not call this incorrect on a test, okay? So they're both fine. Uh, y equals X plus eight is probably the more common answer. Uh, so there you have it. Just finding the slope and the y-intercept, you've got the m and the b. Pretty cool. Let's go to the next one. So this next page is talking about domain and range. Right? And again, you, you learned about domain and range before. Uh, but domain, just to give you a quick refresher, domain is all the x values that you have in your function. Your range is all your y values that you have in your function. So if you're looking at um, this uh, graph here, this diagram where it says domain and range, okay, all of the possible x values, that's left to right. Your y values, your range, that's down to up. Okay, So you need to remember that. Um, domain is how far left and how far right. Range is how far down, how far up. Okay. Now just remember also they want you to remember these things. X is the independent variable. Y is the dependent variable. Okay. And you say, well, why would they say that? Well, usually you are given an x value, and the x value determines 
the y value, okay? So the y value depends on the x, okay? So the y is dependent. The x, you can plug in, you know, whatever you want sometimes for the x. So if I can put in whatever I want, it's pretty independent, okay? So x is independent, y is dependent on x. Okay, so let's look at example three. A construction crew lengthened a road and it took 90 days. That's about right. The graph shows the total length of the road versus the time in days. Okay, so the road in kilometers versus number of days that the construction crew is working. State the domain and the range using inequalities. Okay, inequalities is those little alligator mouths that you've used since grade school. So um, let's look at the domain. Again, we're looking how far left does it go and how far right does it go? Well, how far left does this thing go? Well, we're looking at this point. So if you're talking to the left, it's zero. How far right does it go? Well, to the right, would be this point. And we look at the, the y value, and the y value appears to be 90. Okay, so it goes from zero to 90. So we're saying that uh, you could call it x if you want, since it is the horizontal uh, axis. But because it's saying time in days, I'm going to go with little d for days. So number of days, it's greater than zero, okay? Because it goes to the, to the right of zero, a little better one there. Now, because the left point is filled in, Okay, that means that it includes zero, so we have to go less, uh, less than or equal to D. So zero is less than or equal to D. And then the 90, okay, D is always either less than or equal to 90. Because the circles are filled in, we need these or equal to symbols, okay? If they were hollow, open circles, Okay, if they were these, okay, if they were open circles, then we would not have them. We would just have the little alligator mouths with no line underneath them. Okay, so now let's look at range. Okay, range is down to up. How far down does this graph go? Well, the, the lowest point is this point right here, but we're talking up down. We're talking Y values. Okay. Y values. And that lowest Y value appears to be, let's see, let's uncover it a little bit so that you can see it. Okay. That lowest value appears to be a 60. Okay. So the lowest Y value is 60. The highest Y value how far up does it go is again at this point. Well, this point, if we're talking about up, we're looking at the Y coordinate. The Y coordinate is 150. Okay, so this is uh, the length of the road in kilometers. So I'm gonna go with K for kilometers. And K is greater than or equal to 60 and less than or equal to 150, all right? So again, because these are filled in circles, okay, they're solid, solid circles that they were given to you, right? We have to have less than or equal to's written down there instead of just less than's. Okay, let's look at example four. So in example four, it's a little bit different because it's not just a line segment with two endpoints. This time we have one endpoint, and then we got this arrow. And remember, arrows mean that it continues on in that direction forever. 
right? So thinking about that, we are going to answer these questions. Our answers are gonna look just a little bit different than uh, example three's answers did, right? So let's look at the domain, right? Domain, remember domain is X coordinates. Domain is left to right. How far left does this graph go? Well, that is the leftmost point. And as far as X coordinates, that's a zero. Okay, so at zero. And let's see, now this is length in meters. So if we're talking length and meters, so we'll go, uh, let's go with, let's go with L for length, just because we have meters and meters squared here. So we'll go L for length and A for area. All right, so if I did the L for length here, and then I said, well, how far to the right does my graph go? How far to the right does it go? Well, where's the rightmost point? That's an arrow. That's not a single point. That's going forever. Now that's going up and to the right. Okay, listen, up forever, right forever. So if it's going to the right forever, I can't do this, right? And I certainly can't do uh, infinity because we can't be equal to infinity, right? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep this very, very simple. And we're going to say that L is going to be everything greater than or equal to zero. So because we like to read left to right, Alex won't call this incorrect, but let's swap it, okay? Just because the, the way that you would read this is the length is greater than or equal to zero. You would read left to right. You wouldn't say zero is less than or equal to the length, okay? So the range, if you did the, the domain, the range is probably going to be pretty easy on this one because this one is down to up. How far down does it go? Well, it goes as far down as that dot right there. So it goes down to zero again. But guess what? It goes up forever. So the area, area is greater than or equal to, because it's still a salt, that's still a filled in circle. So because it's a closed circle, it's greater than or equal to zero, okay? So that's the domain and the range of that particular graph, okay? Moving on. All right, so if you look at example five, I mentioned uh, during the last notes that um, there was a certain type of question that we went over that year in and year out has given a lot of students trouble. This is another one. There are four different functions and you know they're all four represented differently. Uh, and then you have to you know, take each of the, the three questions with each graph and uh, interpret it. Okay, I mean, there's a lot of stuff there, but if you organize it and look at what, it, what they've given you and you say, well, I've, I've been working on M and B. I've been finding slopes and intercepts. They must have given me those. If you can make a little, oh, I do this, okay? I make a little chart. Line one, line two, line three, line four, or function one, two, three, and four. And I wanna know what the M and the B are for each of them. So if, if I can simply know what all the M's are, I can answer these questions. And if I know what the B's are, again, I can answer those questions. So with that in mind, let's look at filling this chart in before we even look at the questions. All right, so let's take, um, let's take the easiest one. Function four, the slope, which is M, is four. 
and the y-intercept is one, positive one. Function three, they gave you the m and the b again. Function three, the m is negative three and the b is negative four. It's really nice of those guys. Okay. Function one, they really gave you everything there too. Look at your graph. You see that the y-intercept is at negative two. You see that point right there. So you know the b in function one. Now what's the m? Well, the m is rise over run. I can do that just by looking at this. I can rise two and run one. Okay, so it's two over one. Now, is that a positive or a negative two over one? Remember, he's rising to the right. So it's positive, okay, so it's positive two. Okay. And the last one is here, the y-intercept. Okay, we've done a question like this before. The y-intercept is gonna be the point that has zero for my x, right? Zero for the x is right there. So that means my y-intercept is the point zero three so the B is three, okay? I haven't had to do any calculating yet. So the last thing that we need to look at is what is the slope, okay? The slope is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, or you could do the rise over the run, okay? I would take, if I were you, I would take these two points and I would very quickly do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay? So take a look. Um, y, if I use this as my second point, so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So there's my 0, 3, and there's my 1, 2, okay? 2 minus 3 is negative 1. 1 minus 0 is 1 negative one over one is negative one. Okay. Now that's the work, okay? If you can do that, now we just gotta read, okay? That's all we gotta do, just gotta read. Okay, here we go. A, which function has the graph with the y-intercept farthest from zero? So y-intercept is B. So which of these is farthest from zero. You know, you know which one, right? It's this one. Negative four is farthest from zero out of those four. So negative four would be function number three. So function three or F3, just like my battleship. Okay, which function's graph is the steepest? Okay, now steepness, that's slope. Okay, we talked about steepness being further away from zero. So which of these slopes is furthest from zero? I don't care if it's positive or negative. Which one is furthest from zero? Which one? That one's definitely further from zero than the rest of them. It happens to be positive, but it didn't need to be positive. Furthest from zero, the slope is four, and that is function four. So I'll put F4. And now, finally, which functions, functions have graphs with y-intercepts, okay? So y-intercept is M, as is B, excuse me. Y-intercept is the B greater than negative three. Okay, greater than negative three. Which of these numbers is greater than negative three? Well, one is definitely greater than negative three. Three is definitely greater than negative three. Okay, think about a number line. Greater numbers go to the right. So which of these two numbers, negative two or negative four, goes to the right from negative three. Negative two, yeah. Another way I like to think of it is, you know, think of temperature. What's hotter, 
negative two or negative four? Well, negative two degrees is warmer than negative four degrees. Okay? We'll probably find out about February. Okay, so function one, function two, and function four, all of them have y-intercepts that are greater than negative three. Okay? But again, we did this easily because of our chart. So let's do the same chart for example six. Okay? Um, let's set it up. Okay, let's finish off this last question. All right, example six. Let's make our nice little chart. Okay, I'm gonna put mine down here, put yours wherever you want. Okay, so. False alarm. Again, let's do function four first. Tells us that the, the slope is. Doug Gleason, please call Mr. LaDusha. Mr. Doug Gleason, please call Mr. LaDusha. Okay. Uh, <laughs> function four. Let's do function four. The slope is one. The y-intercept is negative four. Let's do function three. The slope is four. The y-intercept is positive five. Okay. Now let's look at function one. Okay. Look at the y-intercept. Where's the b? The y-intercept is right there. And it's the y-coordinate, so it's negative two. Now let's look at slope. If I'm gonna rise and run, I can either start at the one on the left, rise and run, okay? So how far am I rising, how far am I running? Okay, so I'm going to rise five and run one, okay? So it's five over one or five, but it's going down to the right. Okay, so that's a negative slope. So we're rising negative five and running positive one, negative over positive. Okay, okay so let's find function two. Function two, again, we should be able to find the uh, y-intercept very quickly, very easily. Oh, look, the x-coordinate zero. These folks are very nice. Zero, three is my y-intercept, so b is three. Slope, I would highly recommend taking those two points. So y2, y1, x2, x1. Okay. So we would look at, if I want the slope of line number two, okay. I would do zero minus three over one minus zero, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Zero minus three is negative three, one minus zero is one, you have negative three as your slope. Okay, if you took the time to do that preparation, I think you're gonna be just fine answering these questions. So, which function has the graph with the greatest y-intercept? Okay, so y-intercept, we're looking at the b. Okay, which of these is the greatest? Notice it didn't say the furthest from zero. It says the greatest. So it's like the whole temperature thing. Which one's the warmest? Okay. Or if you're thinking about a number line, which one's furthest to the right? Well, the greatest is going to be positive five, which means function number three is my answer. So function three has the greatest y-intercept. Okay. Question B. Which functions have graphs with slopes less than negative four? So slopes, we're looking at M, okay? And again, whenever it says graphs, it means that there could be more than one. They don't have to be, but they could be, all right? So if you find one, don't stop, keep going. All right, so look at these slopes, less, than negative four, less than, 
Okay, that means you're going to the left on the number line. That means you're getting colder in temperature. So which of those would be colder than negative four degrees? Which one of them is less than negative four on a number line? Well, one is not less than negative four. Four is not less than negative four. Negative three is not less than negative four. Negative five is less than negative four. Okay, so that means function number one is the only function, even though it said functions, okay? Which functions have graphs with slopes less than negative four? Function one was the only one, okay? And then finally, which functions graph is the least steep, okay? Think about notes we just recently did. Least steep, Okay, least steep means something about horizontal. Remember, horizontal is as least steep as you get, and the slope of horizontal lines, zero. So least steep means that your slope is the closest to zero. Okay, which of those slopes is closest to zero. Is it negative five, negative three, four, or one? Hopefully you see that one is closest to zero out of those four numbers. So that means that function number four is my final answer for question C. Okay, we are done day three. Uh, you know, go through your practice get questions answered, um, you know, get ready to take the upcoming quiz. And uh, you know, hopefully you're, you're breezing through. If there's anything that you uh, are not feeling confident on, please speak up and, uh, and we'll get you on the right track, okay? See ya.